All right, let's talk about the judicial system. So for the most part, judiciaries have similar functions. These functions include interpreting and applying laws, resolving disputes, typically in the form of lawsuits between two parties, uphold the rights and liberties of citizens, upholding their right to live, any rights and principles that are written within a constitution, provide a sound legal system and enforcing the laws within those legal systems and defining those laws and what they mean and maintaining a separation of powers and having independence and doing their job correctly without influence and external control of other organizations or branches and to establish and uphold the rule of law so nobody, even a presidential candidate or a prime minister, is above the law. Everyone has to follow the law and will be held to the same standards. Now, all judiciary serve the same functions. No, no, not all of them do. For the most part, all of them should follow these six functions I just mentioned. But some, like in Iran, they have a job of upholding Islamic faith and Sharia law. So that's not going to happen in the United Kingdom, for example, because they're not a theocracy. So it can vary at a country-by-country -country basis. Let's talk about China. So rule by law happens in China. This means that the judicial system is subservient to the Communist Party. So the Communist Party is kind of above the law. And people who are not communists are below the law. The Communist Party will control most judicial appointments. So these ideologies are represented within the judicial system. And the courts must follow these party decisions or they just won't be effective or the judges will be replaced. The People's Procuratorate, 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 I don't even know how to say that, provides public prosecutors and defenders to the courts. Again, the communists, not Joe Smith can't just come in and do this. Oh, great, the Constitution. The Constitution state courts states courts should exercise judicial power independently and free of interface from other bodies and organs and organizations. Constitution is such a joke in China because the Communist Party does not interfere with the court. They don't nominate the judicial appointments or anything. And it's not like the courts are just another body of the, the CCP like every other branch in China is. If you haven't taken that away from this course yet, there you go. <laughs> All right, somebody wrong. So the Iranian judiciary, the Iranian, the Iranian judiciary is, has a major function to ensure that the legal system follows the religious law and that judges are trained in Islamic Sharia law. For example, banks in Iran are forbidden to charge interest outside of free trade zones. This is called riba. The head of the judiciary is a cleric. They are appointed by the supreme leader, and they actually nominate half of the guardian council, but the majors will approve of these nominations. There are also civil courts for some smaller crimes and revolutionary courts for more serious crimes, particularly national security trials. In Mexico, we have a judiciary that's in transition. The Supreme Court is the center of judicial review, and if judicial review warrants it, there will be constitutional amendments, and this will make the system more independent and effective. There are 11 magistrates that are nominated by the president, and the Senate will approve of these uh, magistrates, so they have the appointment power. And then these judges, these magistrates, as the, the term for it, have a term of 15 years. Federal and state courts of origination appeals also exist for your smaller crimes in the appeals. And then the Supreme Court is that big court of appeals, the final court of appeals. In Nigeria, we have 21 Supreme Court judges. So in Mexico, there's 15. In Nigeria, there's 21. They're recommended by a judicial council. They're the only country that has a judicial council. And they are appointed by the president and confirmed by the Senate. So very similar to Mexico, as in they're confirmed by the Senate. The judiciary in Nigeria has the power of judicial review, and an effort has been made, because they're democratizing, to reestablish its legitimacy and independence, and they're trying to reduce corruption. Now, since Nigeria is a federal state, regional interests are upheld more in these regional governments, and northern Nigeria is particularly Muslim. So Islamic Sharia courts have been established in the north because of that Muslim occupation in the north. There's also a Federation Court of Appeals that will hear appeals from the state courts of origination appeals. And the Supreme Court is obviously the highest court of appeals in Nigeria. So let's talk about Russia. Russia's government uses the judicial system to target opposition. Why am I not surprised? It'll target people who disagree with the government's decisions and the United Russia as a whole. Constitutionally, constitutionally, the courts have had the power of judicial review. However, it's never been used, ever. Judicial review has never been used by the judges to limit the authority of the government branches, particularly the legislative branch. So nothing's been deemed unconstitutional. The Constitutional Court 
was established in the 1993 Constitution. It has 19 members appointed by the president and confirmed by the Federation Council. So none of these members are elected by the people. It is important to note that the Federation Council, the upper house, confirms these appointments. But we do have district courts that deal with criminal trials. We have regional courts that are appellate courts. And we have a Supreme Court, which is the final court of appeals. And it's made of 115 members that are appointed by the president and confirmed by the Federation Council. It's the last resort for Russian administrative, civil, and criminal law. In the United Kingdom, they have common law because they don't have a constitution that will enforce the rule of, hall, rule of law so nobody is above the law. And they use a variety of unwritten laws and principles based on legal precedents set by the courts as well as some other um, legal documents like the Magna Carta. Top judges will use this common law system to interpret possibly very vague laws and establish a judicial precedent and legal precedent for other judges and organizations to follow. We're actually looking at an example shortly. So a major function of the Supreme Court includes serving as the final court of appeals, protecting human civil rights and liberties, and ruling on devolution disputes, because the United Kingdom is big on its devolution and transferring power to its regional assemblies. The UK Supreme Court is also very new. It was established by an act of parliament in 2009, particularly to resolve disputes regarding uh, regional authorities, aka devolution. So let's look at an example of a 2014 judgment in it's revolving around the agriculture sector bill. So a little bit of history. Um, Wales and England were under a system of regulating agriculture wages, so pay, until 2013. So they're under the same ideas of payment for their agriculture sector until 2013. And this was under the Agriculture Wages Act of 1948. And this was established by the parliament um, until 2013 came along and wiped this system under the Enterprise and Regulatory Reform Act. Now, the Welsh Assembly, when the system was wiped, sought to create a new agriculture wages panel just for Wales, and they stated that they could do this because it was falling under assembly competence for to make legislation that relates to, and this is quoted, agriculture, horticulture, forestry, fisheries and fishing, animal health and welfare, plant health, plant varieties and seeds, and rural development. So these are powers that have been devolved to Wales by the overall federal United Kingdom governments. And they said... Um, regulating agriculture wages within Wales falls under these categories. Now, the Attorney General of the UK disagreed and found that the issue didn't really revolve around agriculture, but employment and, and industrial relations themselves. So these powers sh should not be devolved to the Welsh Assembly, and they don't have the competency to make such decisions. However, the Supreme Court looked at the case and unanimously meet, found, which means they all agreed, that the bill did fall within the competency of the Welsh Assembly, aka they had the power to make this wages panel. I also about independent judiciaries, so the last topic for the unit. So it's very similar to independent legislators. So there are various factors that impact the judiciary's independence in our course country. So for one, the amount of authority the courts have to overrule executive and legislative actions. How much checks and balances are in place here, essentially? So is, do they have the power of judicial review? Can they find laws unconstitutional that can warrant constitutional amendments? Like that can happen in Mexico. Like overrule decisions. There's also the process by which judicial officials acquire their jobs. Are they acquiring their jobs from approval of the president and that's it? Or are they being confirmed by a body in the legislature? Or are they being um, acquired by a party? Also, the length of judicial terms. Shorter term limits means that they're going to be more accountable in their actions. They may not follow a certain agenda. Um, they also could have professional and academic backgrounds that differ from what they should be practicing. Judicial officials are expected to have backgrounds in Iran. They need to have backgrounds in Islamic faith. But in other countries, they need to have overall background in the law, in the lawmaking processes, in the law enforcement processes of their countries. If they don't have these backgrounds, then the judiciaries really don't have much independence because they can't do their job correctly. And there's also processes to remove judges from their posts. So impeachment can happen in Nigeria. The Senate can call for the impeachment of a justice. And some countries like China don't have impeachment processes. So they're not very independent in that case. So what's the functions of our independent judiciaries? Well, to maintain checks and balances, protect rights and civil liberties, establish the rule of law, maintain separation of powers. That's a big one. Hold the government accountable for the actions. This is where judicial review and constitutional provisions comes hand in hand. Provide an access point to the legal system for citizens. Ensure free, fair, and contested elections. They can kind of call out an election. And they can follow the rules. 
Now, what can undermine independence and take it away? So, appointing very loyal judges who have a set agenda to follow, particularly if there's no term limits. Removing or threatening the removal of judges if they don't act in a certain way. Promising royalty for loyalty or bribes. Blackmailing or intimidating judges. This is where drug cartels come into play. Refusing to implement or ignore judicial decision so if there's a, a president sent in the united kingdom and the judges just ignore it that's undermining their independence dramatically they could also limit the, if the court's power or jurisdiction is limited that's going to undermine their independence if they don't have the ability to execute their job correctly as well as allowing direct intervention by the executive or the police or if the so if the president says no or they remove a judge halfway through a case that's going to undermine the independence there's no checks and balances or separation of powers in that case controlling legal education or professional association so these judges who are being educated in law are educated in a certain way that can undermine the independence because they're being educated in a biased way there's also ruling by decree or referendum so decrees can be the president passes a law after the judges make a decision and it overrides their decision and well what what the heck did that just do then Okay, so let's look at our course countries now, because we've done that a lot. So we're going to do it again. Starting with the United Kingdom. So the judicial branch of the United Kingdom is viewed as independent from partisan influence and from control of the legislative and executive branches. So we see proper separation of powers between the judicial branch and the other branches. Now, the United Kingdom is kind of special, because I've mentioned earlier that there's no judicial review. But there sort of is, sort of isn't. So we'll explain that. So... They allow for rule of law and a degree of judicial checks and balances without a written constitution and no judicial review. And what this essentially means is that they don't have a constitution to base it off of, no written paper, and they don't have the process to say that there's anything that's unconstitutional because there's no constitution. So they have to use the prior legal precedents and common law to determine if an action was lawful and necessary or not. It may not be. So in 2019, for example, the UK Supreme Court ruled that the Prime Minister's suspension of Parliament was unlawful, and he suspended Parliament to withdraw the state from the European Union. And they said, you can't do that for that reason. You can suspend Parliament with the proper reason, but this was not the proper reason to do so. So, so, so this is actually an example of checks and balances on the executive branch, and sometimes they can use it on the legislative branch. Sometimes the Supreme Court will rule over civil matters as well. It's still a very new system. So there's not too many examples that we can get, at least too many understandable and completed examples. And so in Mexico, they have a improved judiciary with improved independence, particularly in their judicial review, which can cause for constitutional provisions, but they do see pressures from organized crime that threaten for their own independence, particularly this is the drug cartels that threaten for their own autonomy and their own rule. The president can recommend justices that are confirmed by the Senate for 15 year term, so this kind of weeds out any justices, weeds out those that are not on an agenda. However, if the government has a set agenda, agenda in place they may only approve justices that follow their beliefs and ideologies but they do have the power of judicial review and can say that certain laws are unconstitutional in nigeria they also have judicial review and the judiciary has also tried to improve its independence and this is particularly through reducing corruption this is a very very recent and concurrent process they use a common law legal system as well as their constitution and this common law legal system is notable because they'll give more power to the judges to interpret the meaning of laws they have to set the precedents to have them and that's essentially what they're doing right now but they do process judicial review to call to call certain laws unconstitutional and then in the 2019 presidential elections prior to it the president suspended the chief justice now what does this mean this is a lack of judicial independence because we see a fusion between executive and judicial power we actually see a diminishing judicial power here and an indicator of reversing independence or democratization the Supreme Court justices are also recommended by a judicial council and are appointed by the president and confirmed by the Senate, which is three whole steps, which is a lot. It can be a lot of obstacles for a candidate to become a justice. In Iran, they have a constitution that claims the judiciary is an independent power, but the courts are pro commonly used to prosecute oppos opposition figures, particularly those that oppose the government or Islamic law. 
This can create a culture of rule by law as contrasted to rule of law, which is in an independent judiciary typically found in a democratic society. They're holding the opposition to a higher to a higher standard, essentially, in the sense that if they do something, they're going to face a higher pu uh, punishment or a more direct punishment. But they do have judicial review, so if a law is considered not Muslim, they will call that out, sort of like the Guardian Council. The ultimate legal authority doesn't really rest in the Constitution, but in Islamic law, and this cannot be overruled. And, it, and overall, it treats men and women and Muslims and non-Muslims unequally. Uh, for example, they'll fail to protect certain civil liberties and rights that we have in America and other countries, such as uh, the death penalty for homosexuality, alcoholism, etc. In China, there is no independence of courts, even though judges sometimes make rulings against the government in lawsuits by citizens. This is very rare. But the courts are essentially just communist figures. These rulings against the government are seen as superficial, and they do not have the power of judicial review, even the further constitution that really doesn't do anything. The Communist Party is the true center of power, and they also control judicial appointments that will follow their agenda. There's rule by law, so essentially people are above the law, and there's also a 99.3% conviction rate, as there's no protection of civil rights and liberties. So if you do something, you're probably going to jail. You're not going to pass go. You're not going to collect $200. If you, even if you didn't do something, you could still go to jail. That's just, that's just how it works. And finally, Russia, they have a judiciary that's not independent because the government has used the courts in the targeting of political opponents and descendants, particularly during election time. Now, they've never used its power to check the president's power or the legislator. They've never used judicial review. It, it does exist, but they don't use it. They've never used it. The president, which is part of United Russia that controls the majority of Congress, appoints and approves those who sit on the federal judiciary, so lack of independence there. Judicial review exists, but it hasn't been practiced. Yeah, it just doesn't exist. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. It's free, which means it costs zero dollars, and it really does help me out. Leave a comment down below with any questions. I'll be happy to answer them. There's some links down below in the description with practice tests, key terms, guided notes, all that fun stuff. Head on over to the next AP Comparative video on some really cool political stuff.